Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for that our uh, special celebration of summer solstice. I am Alina Smolyansky, a transformational coach and an artist. So with this today, it's a little bit early this uh, year that we are celebra started celebrating summer solstice like, due to some logistics, but it's not a problem. The sun is always in the sky and you can use this practice for uh, any occasion. So it doesn't have to be in summer solstice, but it's considered the most astronomical and most charged time. So what's so special about summer solstice? You know, it's a astronomical, it's a big event. Full energy. The sun is at full energy. Or right now is a summer solstice. It's in northern hemisphere, and it's winter solstice in the southern hemisphere. But the uh, so right now we're in northern hemisphere, experiencing the most the peak of this summer energy. So how will our class will be structured today? After a presentation about this entire event and specifically about this, I wanted to share with you how. Other countries, less known countries, celebrate this event. So I'm referring to Slavic holiday, Ivan Kupala, which is widely known in the uh, eastern part of Europe, like uh, Ukraine, Belarus, and uh, surrounding all uh, like Slavic countries. Uh, still celebrated, and it's an ancient pagan holiday that the true origin is not known. So that will be a part of a presentation. And then we will go to the drawing. I will explain a little bit to those who are completely new. I will uh, give a few ideas about neurographic art, the neurographic line that we used in our drawing. And then we will start our drawing. And then with this, I will share my screen. So awakening the spirit of the summer solstice with Rhee's wish making. So when we talk about the summer solstice, we are considering always talking about the sun. These dates make it so significant, and it typically falls in northern hemispheres between June 20th and 22nd, depending on the year. So, and the word, uh, the word uh, so solstice comes from two Latin words, which is uh, sol, the sun, and stitum, uh, stay still. So what ancient people observed when the sun moves in its uh, highest point for the north, it's almost like, like it stays still. It's paused for three days. It does the same in winter time as well. So like three days, there is no changes. And then it starts slowly moving south. And then the days start um, getting shorter. And that way it starts moving towards winter solstice. Winter solstice, then the story re repeats with the sun. So you can see it on the fullest tilted. So that's why we experience longer days. The farther north, the more like a tilt, like you can see on the curvature of a globe, so the days are longer. And it's only in the southern countries, close to equator, the days and the, it's almost the nights are almost the same length. So the, well, those two events were significant for many cultures because how they measured, they, they knew how to harvest, how to to prepare their agriculture and also how to create their calendars. So many calendars are based on those events, whether, for example, in uh, ancient Greece, that was the summer was the start of the new year. And some countries, cultures, winter solstice at the beginning of the new year, or some countries, uh, nations, spring equinox. So then what we know about uh, the celebration. The most notable, of course, is Stonehenge. It's a monument believed to be about 4,000 year old and one of the most famous monuments and people still gathering to celebrate this day because the, this uh, circle of stone is aligned with the solstice. So it's probably believed that it was a sacred gathering place for people who celebrated this special day and how they connected with the cycles of the sun. But this is not the only place that was uh, celebrated. Uh, for example, in ancient Greece, the summer solstice marked the beginning of New Year and also was one month before uh, the Olympic Games began. In ancient Rome, uh, that was uh, these uh, days of 
a few days of cellar, summer solstice were dedicated to goddess Vesta. And the celebration was Vestale, and they honored home and family. So Vesta was the goddess of the hearth. It was a time for purification and protection of the home. So, and when we move in Europe, ancient tribes celebrated in many other ways. Fire and water were more specific because fire is symbolized the sun and the power of the sun and heat and energy. Water, it was like almost like two opposite natures met together. So it was fire and water. And it still is continuing with celebrating with fires, exchanging food, dancing, and singing. Ivan Kupala Day and night is one of those celebrations of when the ancient people celebrated and honored fertility, energy, and the sun. So on that, within our drawing session, we will explore one of those rituals. So what is the Vanku Day? It is a traditional Slavic holiday, and it's celebrating love, fertility, and beauty of nature, and also connection with nature. It takes place in the night around like 23rd of June to July 6th, depending on the calendar. And the name of Ivan Kupala Day combines the two words, Ivan, which is Ivan, uh, Ivan or John, and Kupala, which is a Slavic god of water and fire. This holiday brings people together, and these ancient customs celebrate this arrival of the arrival of summer. Eventually, it became combined with a Christian feast of nativity of John the Baptist. It is believed that uh, that part of modern-day Ukraine, that was a huge ancient state empire of Kiev and Rus, and the capital which was in Kiev. So those, that was where this culture probably originated. That was a, it was a pagan state and eventually was converted into Christianity in the 9th century. And that's what probably to overpower, just to make people not to consider so much pagan traditions. It was associated with the, the nativity of John the Baptist. That's how Ivan Kupala Day became known. So it has two traditions combined. That's again, John the Baptist, baptism into the dipping in the water and fire, uh, heat and energy of the sun. Oh, and uh, Kupala was probably the, the god of uh, water and fire, and that was honored with offering, by offering and rituals, and especially with ritual bathing in any open uh, water, like rivers or lakes. So despite of this transformation moving from pagan traditions to John Baptist, and ideas of Christianity, people continued celebrating. And now, with even with this difficult time, Ukrainian people still celebrate this day by getting together and honoring their connection with nature. Ivan Kupala Day is, a, is one of the most magical holidays and involves many traditions. Like, for example, one of them is, uh, we will talk about wreath. You see the girls putting a wreath with light and water, and also jumping over fires. And they believe that a couple jumps over the fire together, holding their hands, their union will be blessed and strengthened. And circles, you know, from neurographic, circles important. It's dancing in circles around fires. It was one of the, the night when nobody slept. There are some other tradition involved. And looking for... So, water and fire and circles. So that was one of the tradition that even was so much art dedicated to it. One of the images you see that looking for the fern flower, which is believed those who find this fern flower that blossom only on that night, Ivan Kupala night, will be blessed with wisdom, prosperity, and happiness. I sell all good things, they have to be earned. And those who looked for that burnt flower, the magic burnt flower, had to overcome many difficulties because evil forces were guiding it. Celebration, jumping over the, over the fire, it's like rituals, it's almost like it's being baptized by fire, jumping over it. One of the rituals was uh, involved gathering wild flowers and herbs on that night. And there was belief that flowers gathered at that night had this very specific energy. So the tradition said, and that's why we're going to use it today, is making the wreath and filling it with our wishes. So the belief on that night, women, and specifically young women, were making those wreaths with wild flowers and herbs, putting a candle or any fire in them, and letting them 
and water and river and letting them flow with sending their wishes. Like imagine that all these fires are like tiny lanterns floating on the river at, at night. And it's almost that when they have these wishes, like how much trust to the universe they can imagine, you make this wish and you let it, you become detached and letting the universe or God take care of it. So when we participate in our drawing session, we create our own wreath using paper, drawing supplies, and we infuse our drawings with our deepest desires, dreams, and intentions. Or you can make wishes to the world or wishes to yourself. We let them go. We become detached. And they, those wishes will be carried with the currents of life. We will continue with our uh, drawing. So this is not a, a strictly neurographic session. So you're welcome to use any supplies. We will still use some ideas of a neurographic art, like the line, like rounding the corners and connection of all the elements. You see, I prepared, so I have water, I have fire. You can't see it in the daylight here, the fire. And the greens. Uh, greens, but they have such a nice scent. I will, I'm going to use black paper, so symbol of darkness. So, and as uh, to begin with, I will just do, for those who joined us the first time, I will briefly explain what you need to know to create this neurographic art drawing. Neuro art, neurographic art. And the first one is the, the neurographic line. It's one of the most important elements, neurographic or neural line. It's, um, by definition, this is the line that doesn't repeat itself. So when you draw it, it's uh, uh, created, you move your hand slightly. So there is no pattern and there is significance specific about this, why we do that. Like when I mentioned about uh, recreating the pattern, if we want to experience any changes in life, and then we definitely play a drawing, we want to see, have something to move from one position into another in our mind, in our understanding. We do not want to repeat it. So it's unpredictable. And how we draw it, just there's a long explanation how to draw it. But at the very beginning, just make sure that you do not repeat it. So the pattern, so this one, equal this one, and this one. So they're all different. So if you have, for example, a straight line like this, direction from A to B, you want it, and I still move your hand. creating an even line, almost like imitating nature. There are no straight lines in nature. And if we want to communicate with nature, it's a good idea to try to learn its language. So on the other important element, of course, it's rounding. And again, when we have two lines, for example, across each other, they form four corners that look like kind of um, uh, sharp. So what we call the element of rounding is when we soften the corners by creating like, it's almost like letter U, Latin U, and uh, creating this softening effect. So once again, the line across, And making soften connection, a soften connection. Why this is important? Uh, firstly, they represent connection between different thoughts. Every thought is our. Every line is a, was originated by a thought, an impulse. Uh, probably unconscious, on us. But our thinking power and our ability to solve problems comes from ability from our to fire, to make these neuro connections fire together, connect. So when the two neurons, two brain cells connect, they transmit information. So the more information they transmit, neurons transmit, the better is our thinking process. 
and it's easy for us to solve, resolve any issues. So that's one of them. So that connection represent connection. Another one is also connection of related to the power of the circle, which represents everything infinite, safe, timeless, and good. So it's almost like if, if it's almost as a tiny circle that appears here. We do not need to draw it. But if you look at the lines when they cross each other, but there's no circle, it's almost like they create a triangle. They create corner, which is sharp and a little bit you know, but not comfortable. It goes back to our uh, very deep in our brain, reptilian brain, not conscious at all. But this element perceived as danger because it has corners and corners can physically damage us, like sharpness. So our skin is unprotected. And this, those when those habits, with those understandings were formed, people were very much unprotected. The idea that with our own hand, we just transform uh, this corner sharpness into a much more positive image of the circle. So that uh, much more I explain about this in my classes, but today we just need a few elements. And of course, when I mentioned connection of all the elements, this represent connection, like a conscious this consciousness connects everything in our world, and those lines represent consciousness. And so all the elements and neurographic drawing and neuro art are connected. So we use the line to connect. Connect all the elements. Even these lines. So uh, the word of caution, if you use different colors, make sure that you blend them to make it a transition between the colors. So that's what I wanted to mention about uh, neurographic elements that we're going to use today, and the rest will be art. So the first I will uh, use uh, dark paper. I would like to, to draw just line. So I will use white marker. You can use a metallic marker if it looks good on black background if you're using. If you're not using dark background, it's okay to use a white paper as well. And I will start with representing, as we're dealing with water, creating neurographic lines that represents the flow of water or the flow of time as we perceive. I'm sure that the lines do not repeat. It's a slow meditative movement. You can use your non-dominant hand. So the line can cross. You can imagine how they flow, the uh, water flow. They move in the same direction, like waves or current. But if you look in the water, uh, especially with the sun, it, it's a perfect example of neurographic lines. The pattern that water creates. Yeah, this is a very good exercise if you want to calm down, relax. It's a very good exercise. Just drawing the lines. So you have an intention. So we're creating this field for our intentions. And the intention will be enclosed in our so-called wreath that we draw as idea with a circle. I can use, I have other colors, for example, it's a beautiful yellow.
It's a dark paper that they have now. It has a lovely texture. So that's why drawing uh, with pencil is quite pleasing experience. For example, I'll try for the blue one and see. So if you use non-dominant hand, just remember you can round always round with your dominant hand. I don't know whether you can use both hands at the same time. That's a straight. This is very good exercise for the brain if you use both hands. And uh, so when you, especially if you try to uh, draw the lines that are not, are not the same. So that's a great, that's my, so, so I have white and gray. I'm trying to do different movement with each hand. Yeah, this is the first time I'm doing it. And the grace and the... Yeah, so uh, I move in the same direction. Yeah, and if I'm imitating the flow of water and time. And I feel the entire page. So those who took the basic user course and know about neurographical, you can recognize this. Uh... Hmm. You like rounding, you can round the corners. So if not all the corners rounded, it's also okay. Uh, this drawing has no conflict, so make sure that you is you're comfortable for you. So when we have enough lines, like a, you fill the area with the different lines, uh, just having a flow, oh, it's time for us to think about our wishes and intentions. So what if you can, it helps you, you can write on 
separate page. So how much, what would you like? So what would be uh, idea of you to send maybe three, four intentions and wishes that you want to experience? I would say that I would like to experience something myself. And that's I would ask the universe to help me to. So I'm sending it as my wish being fulfilled and uh, let it flow. Like one of them that I I'm working on right now is gratitude. Is gratitude that I would like to experience more in my life. And I'm practicing gratitude. Like seriously, like even with intention, like within, with affirmations, I would suggestions. So that I'm, that's one of them. So I would like to experience to being able to experiencing myself and send it. So one of them. And the other one is a, it's known as faith, but it's also it's called the persistence. So that's very important and also related to persistence and willpower. So how much you want to do, if you want something to accomplish, even with my idea, if I would like to practice gratitude, I need that persistence. I need that faith that it's going to happen and it will, faith will help me maintain my discipline and persistence. So that's what I'm thinking about too. And my other one is... Um, imagination as the power is that we're endowed as human endowed with this tremendous power of imagination and i would like to use it in the good what is good use so if you have imagination you may not put it to what i call it to good use without our awareness we can use it even not such a good use like for example thinking about lack or need or poor health it's kind of, kind of being uh, fearful and expecting it so that we can use that's a, an idea of using imagination in the opposite so instead of creating yes we do create but we create something not so helpful in our life So, and I will focus on those three uh, elements that I would like to experience, but also I will send them to ask the universe, help me experience, but also with the idea that they can, uh, these qualities can help others. So what I will do, I will look for supporting lines. Like here, we have plenty of curves. And I will nest some of my, those wreath in those, waves so like so we are not looking for intersection we're looking for rounds some kind of rounds that help us create this form like this one is most inviting so that invites me for some reason and i will probably place the circle here uh, gratitude it's the one that first I mentioned. It was center location, this one. The other one, what I'm thinking is uh, I want to make it more, we'll use orange, like more strength. I look at here. It's the one that I mentioned about face of persistence. Okay, so they, here's I use this circle and this uh, the circle. It's supported by these two waves. I have curve here and curve here. So now I'm looking what what else? What is there any other area attracts me? That's probably this one. It's quite big. This one is imagination that I mentioned. I don't know, like it, maybe. See, more like purple related. So the one is I, I three mentioned. 
but I, I still feel like I need more. So this is a very nice area. And then I notice because I pay attention to this circle, I noted this one. So which one would I would like to experience and important for me that comes to my mind like readily, the like top of my mind, and of course is I, I have a few, but not. So this is close to gratitude. You know what? I will probably, I started making it rose color. So I will call it uh, love. Love in general towards everything. Yeah, yeah. And it's growing bigger and bigger. As you see, and they are all connected. You can it can be experienced. True gratitude cannot be with a feeling of love. So they are kind of very connected. They're not interchangeable, but they're very connected. And I feel like there's something else that is almost like a circle is asking me to be here. I probably live in five, like, like, like odd number typically for artists. Connect the two. It's interesting how they all are connected. This one is a little bit away, but this one needed to. And now it's time to, to connect them. It will not be easy. So if I want to connect them, and definitely connect it, but I do not know which one it is. So how I I do connect them. So I connect them. And somehow imagine that they were flowing maybe separately, and finally they all come together. That just just happened. So this connection is easy to do with pencils. If you're using colored pencil, it's easy. So uh, how I I connect them, make it rounding with two different colors, I overlap them. It's This is very easy to do with pencils because we blend. Uh, they can be blended and Layered like colors. So also I round and I connect um, the circles. Connect the circles for the lines in the sitting. Now I feel like I need to expand this one. What's related to, I remember with imagination, I was a little bit away from others.
So what else you can do is, of course, to uh, feel this you now. You, this is the main composition. To feel those breathe with magic, whatever you want. You can include uh, symbols. If you're thinking about symbolism, so we don't have a magic herbs or flowers you can include flowers that you think will help you or just any i suggest maybe symbols so if you can think or you can write like what they or just fill in with lines to uh, really empower them just make them you notice a little like I, I probably do. I will include some neurographic patterns, not patterns, but lines. This time I feel like to round some some of the corners that they have here. Uh, we typically include colors in our uh, neurographic drawings. But I, I feel like in this specific one, uh, I will include colors, but there will be more like lines. So there will be mostly lines, various lines representing a flow and also uh, colors. Well, this one pencil can produce very nice soft lines. And at the same time, of course, the power of repetition. As I'm, as I'm working with each circle, I can almost, if not talk to it, but I can think about. It. So what what I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it with a, with this energy of particular qualities that are listed. So. So oh, this one was with gratitude. This one I don't know. It's blue. It's just a beautiful color. And I have some ideas, but I don't know which one is this one, this specific one.
but I'm for some reason I'm attracted towards it more than towards others. It was gratitude, that was love, that was resistance of faith. And of course, I'm, I'm blending, blending these colors, connections. So, and in this way, we will continue to the beginning of the drawing. So, you're welcome to develop it the way you feel like just to experience, start experiencing those feelings and that you send to the world, the universe. And also uh, pay attention. Like I, I noticed that I have, uh, when I thought what well, this circle is about, this one specific that was about love, I felt I had different feeling when I was drawing this one. So notice this uh, small uh, differences and try to reflect what. It, what they suggest. And also I can see that my uh, colors, original colors transformed as I blend them. So now, I, and I mentioned what's related to imagination, and I don't know why it's not easy for me to work on it right now.
So I think that the, well, the uh, this is like a general, uh, general idea, and of course you can explore it on your own and decide which one. Like I, as I'm practicing different colors. And then finding something new when it, in expression in every circle it has it something different. Different. So each circle has a different impression. So in this way I will continue. I don't know how far it will take me. It's a creative process. May take much longer. And they had expected. So with this I will probably well, our classes once we're you know, to to the end of the class today. It was a very nice comment from them. Enjoy the flow. Yes, exactly. It's what we're. It's a symbol of idea of enjoying the flow. In this specific drawing. So it was a very interesting experience. But this one, put in a meditative mood with all this, with the flowing lines, with the gentle colors, not markers, but pencils. So I do not often draw with pencils, but that was a very, very different experience. I wish everyone a very nice summer. Your wishes, your intentions being fulfilled. And I look forward to seeing you. Of course, I, we can communicate during this time, but I we probably will get together again on a class like this in the fall. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe we'll celebrate uh, the equinox. Thank you so much and uh, happy summer holiday. All the best and we'll be in touch and we'll be uh, connected. Thank you. Bye for now.